Okay, in this video, we're going to learn a math strategy to check if a number is prime. Now, with this strategy, we just need to check prime numbers when squared is less than or equal to the number. And in the description box, there's going to be a few divisibility rule. And it's going to make a lot more sense when we solve these three problems. And so, let's begin. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with 2. 2 squared, then I'm going to go 3 squared, I'm going to go 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared. But the rule says just check prime numbers when squared. 2 is prime, 3 is prime, but 4 is not prime. 5 is prime, 6 is not prime. And I'll explain why we have to do this. And uh, 2 squared gives you 4, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, and 7 squared is 49. If we go bigger, 8 squared, our number is bigger than 48. So let me draw a number line to explain what we're doing. And I'm going to go from 1 to 48. Now, 48 is pretty easy. We can think of how to get 48 by multiplication. We know 1 times 48. We know 2 times 24. We know 3 times 16. We know 4 times 12. And we know 6 times 8. But like weird numbers, like 3, 7, 5, 9, you don't know all the ways you can get that number. But 48 is a nice, easy number. Now, one thing you'll notice with every number here is one number is small, one number is large. Small, large, small, large, small, large. And you could have a situation where you have the same number. Like if this was 49, you could have 7 and 7. But no matter what, one number is going to be small, one's going to be large, or they're going to be the same, which kind of makes sense. You can't have two large numbers because if you have two large numbers, obviously one number is small. And so that's why there's no need to go beyond 7. Like if you go 8 squared, you're already too big. Now the reason why 4 squared is not important is if a number can be divided by 4, it can also be divided by 2. Because 2 is your prime number and 4 is your composite number. Likewise, there's no need for 6 because in order to get 6, it's 2 and 3. So at this point, why this method is so useful is that we're able to narrow down our testing points. Like 48, again, it's a very easy number to know all the different possibilities. So obviously 48 is not prime. You have, you have so many different options. But weird numbers, it is going to be useful. And so utilizing this strategy, what I do is this. I take my 48, I divide, I start from 2, so I would try 48 divided by 2. Does it work? And it does work. So automatically I know not prime. But by doing it this method, you have less numbers to pick. And why I showed this part right here, it's to know when to stop. So 7 squared is 49, so I know I can stop. There's no point in going above 7. Also, there's no point even doing 7, because if I did 48 divided by 7, automatically it's not going to work. So by doing it this way, all we have to really try is from 2 to 6. But even then, 4 and 6, there's no point because 4 and 6 are composite numbers based on like 2 and 3. So by doing it this method, the number of possibilities that we actually need to try is 2, 3, 5. That's it, 3 possibilities. So let's do another example. So I go 2 squared... 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared. 8 squared, I know I get 64, so 8's too big anyways. So we can cross it out. Um, we can cross out 4 squared, not prime. We can cross out 6 squared, um, not prime. If I So the number that I'm going to test is going to be 2, 3, 5, and 7. If I do 57 divided by 2, I know that's not going to work because it's an odd number. 3, we could do 57 divided by 3. Or if you want, use your divisibility rule. So a number is divisible by 3. If you add it up, 5 plus 7, 5 plus 7, you get 12. Then you divide by 3. If you get a nice, clean whole number, then it is divisible by 3. And 12 divided by 3 is 4, so it works. But let's say you didn't know that. Well, we only need to test 4 numbers. Even then, 5 obviously doesn't work. We could try 57 divided by 3 and use old school um, division. Um, how many times does 3 go into 5? One time. 5 minus 3 is 2, bring down the 7. How many times does 3 go into 27? 9. So we know that this right here is not prime. It's a composite number. So 57 is a composite number. And if you want, try out this problem. So again, 2 squared, 3 squared. Um, I'm writing 4 squared. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to cancel it. 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared. 9 times 9 is 81, so we can stop. And we know it's going to be too big anyways. 
Likewise, six is, is composite, eight is composite, eight is based on two and four. So if a number is divisible by eight, it will also be divisible by two and four. So we're also going to cancel four because if a number is divisible by four, it's going to be divisible by two. So only thing we need to really test is two, three, five, and seven. Now two, it needs to be an even number. 89 is odd, so no. We can try 3, and we can use that method. 8 plus 9, we can write that down. 8 plus 9 divided by 3. Well, 8 plus 9 is going to give us 17. 17 divided by 3 is not a nice whole number. 5. 5s are only going to work if it's like 5, 10, 15, 20. It ends in a 5 or it ends in a 0, so not us. Last one is 7. Um, 7, maybe you don't know any divisibility rule for 7. You know, sometimes do old school method. Just pick 7. 7 times what gives you close to 89? Well, I know 7 times 12. That's something I already know. 7 times 2 is 14, and 7 times 1 is 7. Carry the 1, you get 84. So 7 times 12 is 84, so 7 times 13 is not going to give you 89. So this is an example of a prime number. And again, we didn't need to bother testing out 9, 10, 11, 12, 23, you know, 71, we didn't, we didn't need to test those kind of numbers. And that's pretty much it for this video.